Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for finding the time to attend this important meeting, whose only objective is to highlight the unfolding humanitarian situation in Shawala, especially in Bladwain and parts of Middle Shawala. I am glad to be joined by President Tuare, who has shown outstanding leadership and is also doing his utmost as we speak to contain the situation, to fast track images to prevent further flooding and to support the growing number of displaced people. President Tuare will shortly provide first hand first hand insights into this difficult situation. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as you are fully aware of the unprecedented disruptions caused by COVID-19 and the attendant challenges attributed to this global pandemic, this is by far one of the toughest emergencies Somalia has faced for decades. It will leave trails of devastation in its wake. The socioeconomic impacts will linger much longer than the medical emergency at present. And in spite of our intentions and will to respond inherent to weaknesses in our public health system, continue to hinder our response efforts. The global lockdown has drastically reduced remittances, an economic lifeline for most households in Somalia. Federal government measures such as airspace restrictions and tax waivers to cushion local businesses against the impacts of the pandemic have shrunk domestic revenue. While operational costs to contain and treat the disease by the federal government and member states have increased expenditures substantially. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, in addition to the COVID-19 crisis, we are now faced with another humanitarian situation as Shavala River passed its banks and flooded large areas in Java. Farmlands have been destroyed, homes have been submerged, and thousands have been displaced. Our people are in urgent need for humanitarian intervention. As we speak, the people of Peladwain have begun moving out from town as water began flooding into the city. At the request of President Tuare over the past two weeks, a technical team with senior staff from my office have been trying to mitigate and delay the impact of the floods. In Beladuin, over 100,000 people are displaced, farmlands and houses destroyed, while major businesses are affected. As an example, of the agony the people of this city have gone through, there has been consistent flooding for the past decade, displacing minimum average of 100,000 people every year. This means the people of Peladuane have had to rebuild annually the destruction left behind by the floods. The city of Johar is not faring any better. The district that serves as the breadbasket for Middle Shabal and Mogadish. Between the two districts of Beladwain and Johar, the number of displaced are expected to rise with high risk of flooding foreseen in the coming week. The displaced people are lacking the basic supplies that are necessary in order to survive, and unless immediate emergency response is provided, we might witness a new humanitarian crisis in Ikshawal that will worsen the COVID-19 situation in the country. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, at the Somalia Partnership Forum last October, where I presented to you the water challenges that the country is facing, at the only side event of the forum, we discussed the realization that this country alternates between drugs and floods. Yet millions of donor funds are annually spent on water resource interventions. That's why we committed in that meeting to reform the transactional approach on water management to strategic and sustainable approach. Since then, 
I tasked the Ministry of Energy and Water Resource to develop the Pakia National Water Resource Management Strategic Plan in recognition of the need to create common objectives, common objectives to achieve longer term development gains of the water sector in Somalia. The strategy development began in January 2020, working together under a steering committee and working closely with a team of global and local experts. The team carried out consultation visits to all federal member states and convened a national consultation workshop held in Mogadishu in March 2020. The team is in the middle of data gathering across the country to complete this strategy, which we hope will be the first step in the right direction. As a result of last year's flooding in Peladuene, and at the request of the federal government, the World Bank completed the flood's impact and needed assessment report in January 2020 in Peladuene. The report estimates overall damage and loss arising from the 2019 floods at more than 260 million. Economic losses are assessed to be 72 million in the year immediately following the floods, 39 million in the second year, 35.1 million in the third year, 31.6 million in the fourth year, and 28.4 million dollars in the fifth year. Losses are expected to endure beyond the first five years following the flood until the damages to the transportation sector and to crop production are fully restored, concludes the report. The findings of the report also underlines that Somalia's economic growth from 2019 is expected to decline in the aftermath of the flood with the decline of annual real GDP. It is unfortunate that the people of Hirshavel and many parts of Somalia must go through the same problem every single year while indications and forecasts are known to us. It is equally important that the development investments by our partners is not yielding desired returns in as far as floods and water management is concerned. And if we continue with the same business as usual approach, the people in Peladuane will not realize the stability and normalcy they deserve. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, finally, I would like to earnestly thank our international partners for always standing with Somalia, particularly on occasions such as this, when so much is at stake. On behalf of the people of Hirshavala, I urgently seek your solidarity and material support for an enduring solution for this recurrent flood. I thank you.